called the Section 3, Evaluation of Predictive Distributions. In statistics, we often evaluate proposed estimating methods. In this section, we consider how to evaluate predictive distributions. Suppose that we have two ways of constructing predictive distributions, p hat and q hat. Then we want to determine which is better. The second, we see here the optimality of Bayesian predictive distributions. This is the first uh, shown by Edson 1975. This is a basic theoretical result. Okay, now we consider our formulation. Now, we recall that a statistical model is a parametric family of probability densities here. Theta is a finite dimensional parameter, real parameter, and denoted by M, capital M. And here, the true probability density is specified with the parameter theta zero, or shortly, we write P0 as a true probability density. And this implies a following assumption. True probability distribution or probability density of the future outcome Y exists among the specified statistical model. This is our main assumption. We draw the schematic diagram here the entire white space represents the whole possible probability distributions of future outcome. But this is a very, very huge space, abstract space. So we focus on the restricted subsets denoted by M and specified with only finite dimensional parameter theta. And in our main assumption, true probability densities on the, this model. Okay, now let's consider our problem in a bit abstract way. First, past data or observation are generated by the true probability density p of x given theta zero. And then our task or prediction of the next outcome reduces to constructing a predictive distribution p hat y. y denotes the future outcome. In simplicity, for simplicity, we set n equal one. And of course, P hat Y predictive distribution depends on past data X. And now our evaluation criterion as follows. Rough, very roughly speaking, a predictive distribution close to the true one is better. This is the main idea. But we have used the word close. So how to evaluate the closeness between predictive densities? First of all, we admit predictive distributions outside the model. Even if the true probability densities is on the model. So in other words, we can now use the parameter distance on the model M. This is an important point. So we have to adopt some closest measure of probability distributions. So we want to measure 
for example, the distance from P0 to P hat 1 and from P0 to P hat 2, which is outside the model, but it uh, may be a good predictive distributions of the future outcome. This is a very important point in predictive methods. And there are many candidates of closeness measure. For example, as a function, we can adopt L2 distance or Herringer distance or callback wiber divergence. And here we adopt the callback wiber divergence. For some reasons, callback wiber divergence is a very convenient to evaluate predictive distributions. So we see the basic definition of the callback wiber divergence between P0 and P hat. So from true probability density to predictive distribution, you construct. Which is given by this form. And as you know, properties are known. Basically, as a distance, the callback library divergence is always non-negative. And callback library divergence equals zero if even and only if two distributions are the same. And we skip the details, but callback library divergence has a good information theoretical meaning. Okay, next we define the risk function. Risk function is a generalization of the average error in statistical inference. And here we define the risk function for prediction. This is given by the expectation of callback library divergence from the true probability P theta, we omit the theta zero, and P hat, this is the, your own prediction, predictive distribution, and taking the average for expectation with respect to the observation X. So we explicitly write integral over the data space X. And this is a statistical error. We denote R as a risk function. And risk function is a parameter function. It depends on the true parameter theta. And after taking the average of a data x or observation x, so risk function does not depend on the data x. Now, using the risk function, we want to evaluate the predictive distributions. But we see the following problem. The risk is a function of the unknown parameter theta, and we do not know the parameter exactly. So we cannot obtain uniformly smallest risk for every theta. But in Bayesian statistics, we take the average with respect to the parameter theta. So we obtain not the risk function, but the scalar risk. Here, the definition of the average risk function. Just taking the average with respect to pi of theta. So we integrate over the parameter space. 
after obtaining the average risk function, we can easily compare two predictive distributions. So for example, we can say that P hat is better than Q hat when and only when the average risk of P hat is smaller than that of Q hat. Furthermore, we obtain the best smallest risk. This is shown by Edgson 1975. He showed that Bayesian predictive distribution achieves the minimum of the average risk function. It's optimal. And now we see the sketch of this proof. But if you are interested, more detailed proof, please refer to the original article by Edson. Now let's see the sketch of proof by Edson. First, we rewrite the average risk R pi using the posterior risk. To do so, we set the marginal distribution for x denoted by m of x. And we can use the relation p theta by x times prior equals to posterior times marginal distribution, m of x. Using this relation, we can rewrite the average risk as a form of the expectation of the posterior risk. This is a consequence of the change of the order of the integration over the theta and the x. And here, the expectation symbol E denotes the expectation with respect to the marginal distribution, m of x. Okay, now we consider the minimization of this term, posterior risk, for every fixed x. Okay, now let's consider the minimization of the posterior risk which is written by this term. And for every x, we can minimize this quantity. To see this, we drop the symbol x because x is fixed. And we consider the following simplified minimization. And we can see this kind of minimization problem in informational theory. Here, the argument Q is a distribution and which is interpreted as a code, source code. And it is well known that the minimizer of this problem is given by the base code and this is given by this formula. So this kind of Q by Y minimizes this term. And finally, if we replace pi of theta with pi of theta given next posterior, then we obtain the minimized of this term. So we obtain, what well, we show that the Bayesian predictive distribution minimizes the average risk. Now let's summarize this section. For every statistical model, 
and every prior distribution, Bayesian predictive distribution is a best predictive distribution in terms of the average risk. This is a famous result by Edison 1975. In the next lecture, part two, we consider some application to quantum information science. This is the end of the lecture part one.